Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 1778, shortest path in hidden grid. Turns out this question is not actually a lead code question, it's a reading comprehension question given that the text doesn't even fit into the screen here. So let's now practice our reading comprehension for the SAT. This is an interactive problem. There is a robot in a hidden grid and you are trying to get it from its starting cell to a target cell in the grid. The grid is of size M by N where each cell in the grid is either empty or blocked. It is guaranteed that the starting cell of the target and the target cell are different and neither of them are blocked. If you want to find, uh, you want to find the minimum distance uh, to the target cell, however, you do not know the grid's dimensions, the, tar the starting cell or the target cell. You are only allowed to ask queries to the master grid object or grid master. Jesus, I guess my reading comprehension skills are terrible as well. Uh, the grid master class has the following functions. Can move, which will return true if the robot can move in that direction, otherwise false. Uh, move and a direction, which will move the robot in that direction. And it would move um, if the robot to the, oh, sorry, would move the robot to a blocked cell or off the grid, then the move will be ignored and the robot will remain in the same position and a boolean is target which will return true if the robot is currently on the target cell otherwise it returns false uh, note the direction follows up down left right in characters uh, representing the directions okay return the minimum number uh, distance to the starting cell to the target cell if there's no valid paths return minus one. Oh my god why do they do this this is horrible anyway uh, now with that over, we basically um, want to figure out how to solve this question. And I'm not going to do an example because they're really shit and there's no actual um, kind of pictures. So let's just kind of draw one. So basically we have our robot and or not even our robot. We're just in some sort of grid, right? And we want to find a path to a target cell, which we also don't know. And we also don't even know where we start. So you know, the shortest path in a grid between two points in that grid is obviously going to be to use a BFS, right? We've solved this question before, shortest path in a grid, you use a BFS, you know, you go from your start cell to your end cell, except we don't even know where the start cell is, we don't even know where the end cell is. So what we need to do here is actually two steps. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run a DFS uh, on the grid to find um, the grid, right? So we're basically going to explore the entirety of the grid such that we know its dimensions and we know where the target is, we know where the start is. Uh, so then once we know where the grid is, obviously then this problem just becomes shortest path in a grid, then we're just gonna do BFS to find the distance. So essentially this is how we're going to approach this problem. Um, we're going to DFS it. This is going to be similar to the problem robot room cleaner where you're basically trying to go around uh, and explore the entirety of the grid. Uh, I think it's going to be actually a little bit easier here. Uh, and then once we have the grid, then we can just do a BFS. So that's really the approach we want to do. Again, no need to like draw an example because, okay, we're going to start at some point and then we're going to discover uh, the rest of the grid, right? We're going to discover where the boundaries are. We're going to discover if there's any obstacles and we're going to find the target as well. And then once we know what the grid is, we can say, OK, let's just BFS to find whatever the shortest possible route may be. And there you go. So really nothing too complex. We've done this before. We've solved these kind of problems. It's just actually probably doing the DFS is the harder part, but the BFS is easy. So we just need to basically figure out the grid. And that's really the crux of this problem. So now let's actually go to the code editor and see how we'll type this one up. Let's now code this up. First thing we want to do is get rid of all this crap so you can actually see what I'm going to code. All right, so we talked about how we need to do the DFS to find the grid, and then we're going to do a BFS. So we're going to do the DFS. Basically, we're just going to perform our DFS, and we're going to use backtracking to go through the entire grid. And then once we hit a dead end, we're just going to you know go in the reverse direction so we can find all the possible paths. Now, unfortunately, we are told that our API here actually takes strings um, as the direction. So we need to actually have a mapping between the string direction name and the actual coordinate direction uh, for our grid. So let's now type out the directions. And we're basically going to say, uh, let's see if I can do this on one line to save space. So remember that up is the equivalent of, let's see, um, I guess we can go minus one, zero. So you're gonna go, yeah, you're gonna go up one in the grid. So you're gonna subtract one from the X 
And then down is going to be the opposite. So you're going to add one to the uh, x position and keep the y the same. Uh, the left is going to be, let's see, um, you're going to be going to the left. So you're going to subtract one from the y. Oh, sorry. So this is the, yeah, this is the x, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, right, you're going to go one. Zero. Okay, cool. That should be the coordinates. <clears throat> and that is basically the directions, right? And then what we also need to do is we need to backtrack. <clears throat> so when we backtrack, we can't apply the same um, direction here, we actually need to flip everything. So when you go when you went up to go back, you basically need to find the opposite um, <clears throat> value here. So we actually need a map to tell us the direction that we went, what is the opposite uh, direction? <clears throat> we could just do this in line, but just to save time, we'll do it this way. So we're going to do reverse um, directions. Uh, and this is just going to be a map of basically the opposites, right? So if you went up, then obviously the reverse is down. If you went down, then the reverse is up. If you went left, then oops, uh, if you went left, then the reverse is right. And if you went right, then the reverse is left. Okay, so this will help us with the backtracking. Sorry, that's the capital. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to have a visited set so we can uh, make sure we don't get caught into an infinite cycle in our DFS. So we're gonna say visited equals to set. And we're gonna say, actually just do self.visited uh, equals to set. And we're gonna say self.target equals to none. Okay, so now we need to actually perform the DFS. So we're going to pass in oops, def DFS. We're going to pass in an X and Y coordinate. And now we need to actually um, do the DFS. So the first thing we want to check is remember, we need to find where the uh, target is, right? <clears throat> because we need to essentially um, know where we're going to go to during the BFS. So we're going to say if master, uh, I guess that's the, the object, right? The master grid. And remember that it has the the, the method is target defined on it. So if our current position is the target, then we want to say self dot target uh, equals to x comma y. Okay. Otherwise, we need to perform uh, our DFS. Actually, we can still continue even if we found the master. So we're going to say visited dot add. So we've now visited x comma y. So this should be self dot visited. We've now visited this. And now we actually need to go in all four directions and basically um, explore those. So we're going to say for direction in directions, um, we are going to say, actually, do we even need these cell? Okay, whatever. Uh, we're going to say the new X, the new Y is going to equal to basically the old X. So X plus directions. So of direction, and we're going to take the zero for the X position. And we're going to do uh, sorry, comma directions of direction. God, I cannot type this morning um, of one to get the Y position. Um, and we're going to add Y to that, right? So Y plus this um, is going to get it gives the Y position and this is the X position. OK, so those are the new variables. Now what we want to do is we actually want to check whether we can actually go there. So we're going to say if uh, new x new y is uh, not in visited so we don't want to go there if we've been there before and we can actually move there so we're going to say uh, master dot can move and remember the can move actually takes um, let's see can move uh, it takes the direction right so we're going to pass the new direction that we're going so basically up down left or right and if we can move in this direction uh, then we are free to proceed. So we're going to say master dot move, and we're going to move to the direction uh, we want to go. And then we're going to call DFS from that new position. So we're going to call from new X, uh, new Y, and then we're good to go. And because we're doing backtracking, we need to undo the operation that we just did. Uh, so we're going to say master dot move. And what we're going to do is now we need to go backwards. And this is why we have the reverse directions. So we're going to say we're going to move in the reverse direction that we came from. So if we went up, obviously, we're going to go down. If we went left, then we're going to go right. So we're going to say reverse 
directions and we're going to pass in the direction. So basically this will just undo the operation that we did and we're good to go. Okay, so that is the DFS function um, written. All we need to do now is actually just call the DFS function. So we're gonna call DFS and we start at position zero, zero. Okay, once the DFS is called, we need to check whether or not target is still none. It could be the fact that target doesn't exist, <clears throat> in which case there's no way we can actually get to that position. So what we need to do here is simply just return minus one. So we're gonna say if not, target, <clears throat> I want to simply return minus one. All right, now at this point, <clears throat> we know our grid and we are able to basically traverse it from our starting point to our target. And this just becomes a simple BFS. So we're going to define a queue here and this is going to be a deck. And we're going to basically start at our kind of zero, zero, our starting point. And obviously we've done zero steps at this point. And also we want to add to our uh, visited set. Actually, we're going to, let's see, um, visited, uh, how do we want to do this? Do we want to use a new visited set? Um, or do we want to do a, do we want to reuse the old one? Let's see, I think we can reuse the old one. One second, let me think about this. Okay, yeah, my bad. Uh, I did this problem a long time ago and I actually forgot what my old solution was. But um, basically, instead of creating a new visited set, we can actually reuse uh, the old visited set. And every time we actually go to a node, we'll actually remove it from the visited set such that if a node um, is not in the visited set, then we've actually visited it before. It's a little bit confusing, but this way you don't actually have to create uh, a new object to store this new visited set. You can actually just reuse the old one and do a little bit of an optimization. So we're gonna say visited.remove and we're gonna remove our starting position such that now if something's not in the visited set, then it is a, um, we've already been there. So now we just perform our BFS. So we're going to say while Q, we're going to say that the X position, the Y position and the steps is going to equal to Q dot pop left. Uh, oops, Q dot pop left. And what we want to do is we want to say if we're at the target, then we want to return the steps, right? So if X comma Y um, equals to the target, uh, and this should be self dot target, um, then we want to return these steps. Okay. Now um, we just need to go in all four directions and start trying to get to the target. So we're going to say for direction in directions, we're going to say that the new X, the new Y uh, is going to equal to the current X plus directions of direction of zero. You guys know the drill by now. Y plus directions of direction of one. Uh, and that is our new uh, X and Y. Now we need to check whether we visited this place before. And the way that we do that is remember, it's a little bit confusing now. Basically, if the new and uh, if the new X and the new Y are not in the visited set, then that means we've already been there. Um, because we're reusing the visited set and actually removing things when they've um, already been visited. Again, super confusing, but this way we don't have to create a new uh, visited set. So we're going to say if the new uh, X and the new Y is not in visited, uh, then we know that we just want to continue because we've already been there. So, okay. Uh, otherwise, we need to basically remove the current um, place that we've just visited. So visited.remove, we're going to remove the new X, uh, new Y, and then we're just going to append um, this position and continue, right? So we want to continue our search from, uh, let's see, new X, new Y, and steps plus one. And at this point, um, because the target exists, we are basically guaranteed to find a solution. So we don't have to worry about like returning minus one or anything. At this point in the problem, uh, we will find our solution uh, because we verified that the target exists. So, okay, I think that's it. Let's run this, make sure I didn't make any ugh, R. Oh, okay, that should be in quotes. Yeah, okay. Boom. Okay, let's see now. Visited is not defined. Great. Uh, not in, yeah, I hate these. Target is not defined. Wonderful. Uh, okay. Fit. 
Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. This is what happens when you take two weeks off leak code. You basically forget everything. Uh, self dot visited. Self dot. No, wait. Self dot. It's not even self, is it? No, it is. Okay, cool. Um, Q dot append. Let's see. I think that's it now. Cannot. Um. Ay. Okay. Fun. Okay. Um, why is it like that? Oh, sh fuck me. This should be a tuple, shouldn't it? God damn it. Okay, let's see. All right, finally, you know, on the 10th try, we got it. Who cares? We're doing this live, and it's very early in the morning, so my brain isn't working. Um, judging. Judging. Okay, accepted. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, we struggle together. Okay, so time and space complexity. Um, basically, obviously, we need to traverse the entirety of the grid. In the worst case, there are no obstacles in the grid, uh, and you basically need to traverse the entire thing. So in the worst case, it's m by n, uh, where n equals num calls, and m equals num rows. So pretty straightforward, basically just the dimensions of the grid. For the space complexity, same thing. You need to store all of this um, in your kind of visited set. And yeah, that's just going to be storing again n times m. So basically the dimensions of the grid. So you know, you're know you gonna do n times n for the DFS plus n times n for the BFS. This is just you know two n times m, um, but because asymptotically it's the same as n times m, we just write n times m. So that is how you solve this problem, albeit with a little bit of struggle, but you know, I've taken two weeks off, so I'm a bit rusty, but it's fine, we got through it in the end. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully you learned something today, uh, got to practice your reading comprehension skills, and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you, bye.